church, how you feeling today? They, they've been getting my TV placement wrong every week. I gotta, I gotta put some new tape down for them. And actually, they forgot to turn it on. Uh oh. <laughs> Todd just said, uh oh. <laughs> oh man, how's everybody doing? You having a good Sunday? How about a, how about a, is everybody having a happy Mother's Day? Well, I am too. Thank y'all for celebrating it with me. I have, uh, I have two of the best ladies in the house. They get to our, our, that, uh, well, I can't even say that because really just mothers are just awesome. But I do want to say a special Mother's Day to my mom who made me as arrogant and beautiful as I am. <laughs> to my wife who keeps me that way. And to Grand Grand, who rebukes them all. <laughs> I know I'm right. I'm always right, Tanya. But other than that, happy Mother's Day to everybody. I th- I'm thinking my... T- there it goes. It's alive now. I was worried about it. And uh, I just think that the world would really be nowhere without moms. Can we get an amen with that? Moms do more than what everyone else sees, and they, they are, I'm, I'll, I'll be straight honest with you, they're stronger than, than men are, not maybe physically, maybe, well, maybe some of them, you know, but moms can stick it through when even men can't. I, you know, if, if a mom gets the flu or whatever, she pushes through and keeps things going. If the man gets the flu, he's in the covers underneath crying and whining. Can I get amen, men? Don't lie. Don't lie in the house of God. Men, how many know that's true? Right here, right here, right here. Come on, say it. Oh, don't, you ain't got to accuse. That's the devil's job. All right? That's, don't be the accuser in here. But women, if you want to accuse, right now is your chance. Free five seconds. Okay. <laughs> Today, I think, is going to be the, one of the most important sermons that I've ever preached. One of the most important sermons I think that you will ever hear And I don't mean that in an arrogant sense. I mean that in a content sense for what the word is. Because I know that 80% of you are struggling with thoughts and things in your mind. And that's why this series has been so important to us. Because there is a true battle going on in our mind that just continually tells us we're not worthy. Continually tells us that that we'll never amount to anything or that we're ugly or, or that no one loves us. Or continually tells us that someone's talking about us. There's... See, the the devil is constantly whispering seeds of doubt and and lies into our ears on a consistent basis. And it's like it's never ending. And those those doubts and those fears and those lies and those things, what happens is they get down into our heart and they start kind of shaping and controlling us. Causes us maybe not to, oh, there's Mary. There she is. I'm not used to her not sitting in front of me. They start kind of causing us maybe to respond to people differently. Have you, ever, have you ever felt that way? Like you got this crazy thought in your mind and it just built and built and built. And normally it might have been about somebody. And because of that, it caused you to treat that person a little differently. Maybe, maybe you're on guard or maybe you're just kind of mad or maybe you've let something that was nothing build and build and build until it was a whole big blown war in your mind. These are things that and tools of the devil that are active in us every day. And if we're we're not careful, if we're not careful, we will be a servant to the devil and his lies. And that's where we've got to, today, for the last couple of weeks, I've been teaching you about this and how we have to replace those ruts of lies with ruts of truth, right? Those, Those trenches of lies with trenches of truth. And last week we talked about, well, you can't do that if you don't know the language. And the language is God's word. If you don't know that, it's like learning Spanish, If you don't take time to write it, think it, speak it, and be around other people who are speaking it, you'll never understand it. A lot of people want the Word of God, but all they're getting of it is what other people are saying about it, and they're not learning the language. And so you'll never know how to combat those lies if you don't have the truth to fight it. So today, it's called Declarations That Change Me. And today we're going to talk about declarations and how important they are 
and what they mean to us in this world that is filled with negativity, with doubt, with shame, with guilt, and people who love to inflict that on people. And not only that, the devil who loves to inflict it on our mind. So today we're going to learn what the power of declaration is and how it will change our life. Amen? So read this with me. You know, we started off in the first two sermons. I read you what Goliath said. Goliath said, send me somebody out here, and I'll defeat him. And when I defeat him, you will be my servants. And that's what's going on in our mind a lot of times, remember? This giant lie, this this thing that we've allowed to control us has defeated us, and now we've become its servant. But now I want to focus on what David said. So look at me here what David said. He said, to the Philistine, you come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's army, the God, uh, the, uh, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled today. The Lord will conquer you and kill you and cut off your head. He goes on to say, and then I will give your dead bodies to the birds of the wild animals and, to the, whole, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. So here's the main thing that I want you to see. David could have just went out there and done this. He, you know, if, if we're really thinking about it, David didn't have to do anything. He was doing his job. He was tending his sheep. So let's just act like David never, ever showed up. What would have happened? What's the logical thing that would have happened if David had just tended his sheep? Goliath and those Philistines would have killed that army. They would have taken them captive and they would have been servants. Now let's take the next step. David shows up and says, no, 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 no. These guys don't belong here. You are God's army. You are God's people. These things don't belong here. Those negative lies, those negative thoughts, they don't belong here. So David shows up. He says, no, 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 no. I'm going to fight him. Now, step three, he could have just went and done it because he was going in the name of the Lord and he knew that. But first, what did he do? Tell me what he did. He went out. If you look at the scripture before, it is Goliath saying, here's what I'm going to do to you. What did David do? Instead of just running at him, throwing a rock, he responded with a declaration of, here's what I'm going to do to you. And it's powerful right there. See, the devil's whispering in our minds all the time. He's feeding us with lies. There may be people in the world that are feeding us with lies. There may be people that are talking down or negative us on a constant basis. I'm telling you, until you get that spirit of declaration inside of you and learn to combat all that negative stuff that's coming in you, people say you're worthy, unworthy. You say no in the name of Jesus. He has made me worthy. Your words don't make me worthy. My God has made me worthy. I don't know what you're talking about, but I know what he's talking about. Like, you know how mad that would make that person? And I like it. That's fighting words. But you know what? That's fighting with God. That's the Lord's with me. I'm not going to allow the negative talk and negative language of this world and of Satan to shape and mold me. I will not be a, a servant to the Goliath lies inside of my head. Today, I will be just like David and I'll stand up. I'm not just going to go to war. I'm going to go to war declaring what I'm going to do. And that's where we got to get. Amen? You with me this morning? So he goes on, he says, and I'm going to give you dead body. Like he takes it, takes it really, really too far. See, he really stresses me out right here. Like I, we're, David's a God after, you know, a man after God's heart. And he's like, I'm going to feed your bodies to the birds. It's serious. I mean, it's so serious. But, you know, and, but Goliath's original response was, you're going to be my servants. And David's response goes one, even a step further because God has no place for any, any evil to live. So not only did he say, I'm going to kill you, I'm, I'm going to embarrass you. Because I, I know this, is, this might sound a little, maybe un, not, maybe not proper, But God, listen, God's way more powerful, way more, he's, anything that's been spoken, I'm I'm trying to say it proper, all the things that's been said to you, all the negative things that's inside of your heart that's got there, God wants to slaughter that. 
He wants to do away with it. He don't want you to compartmentalize it. He don't want you to put it over here in this box and we'll just deal with it and cope with it. God wants to slaughter it, get it out of you, and be done with it. And he has the power to do that. You just got to start declaring it. Are you with me this morning? Look at this. A lot of people, a lot of people I, I know a lot of people's religion is going to get straight messed up in here and that, right now, and that's fine. This scripture, which gets quoted by a lot of preachers that I think are not of God, for the use of speaking things into life that are silly. There's power of life and death in the tongue. Whoa, there's power in my tongue. Oh, somebody say Mercedes. Ha! <laughs> somebody say debt free, but I'm going shopping today at Bell. Ha! That's not the kind of power in life and death. Now, y'all know that's true right there. I turn on TBN for 37 seconds, and you'll see it. There's power of life and death, and, the, and people have taken that life, and they've made it what they want it to be, but that is not what that is. It's just not what it is. Now, here's where the religion gets a little messed up. This is going in that sermon, okay, the sermon series I told y'all about the other night. So on in a couple months, I'm doing a sermon series that's called Context, and it's about all the things that you think are in the Bible that you've been told all your life, and let me tell you, they ain't there. And that's going to be a really cool sermon series. One of those things is this. How many has ever heard Abraham called things so as if they were? In, in that context, right? Anybody ever heard that? Abraham called things as if they were, even though they were not. That's not, that's not in the Bible. That Romans 4.17 says Abraham believed God who called things as if they were. Holy cow. But people's been preaching, Abraham's been doing that. <laughs> that's not, that's a, that is heresy. And so people have twisted and contorted the Bible. It says Abraham believed God who could do those things. Like where are we missing this stuff? There's power of life and death in the tongue. It has nothing to do with material things. But it has to do with the life and death that we can create in people. In people. And we got to get on that page today. We, 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 got to un, we got to have a clear understanding of what it means to declare life in those situations that seem dark. And we got to declare death to those things which are trying to darken it. Let me say it again so you get it, because that was one of those things you should have stood up and shout. We got to learn to declare life to those things that are trying to keep us in the darkness. And we got to learn to declare death like David did, death to those things that are trying to keep us in the dark. We've got to get to that place where we are so on fire and believing for God and believing in God that we can stand up and no matter what the enemy has come to us, we can declare God's truth and we can have faith in God's truth and we're declaring it and we're saying it and we're believing it and these things that's been holding us captive for so long won't have any power over us. The Bible says that no weapon formed against me will prosper, right? And we stop there. The next one says, and no tongue shall rise against us. Yeah. And that's even the slippery, slimy, satanic tongue that he's got trying to whisper in all our ears. No tongue will rise against us. No weapon formed will prosper. It doesn't mean they're not going to be formed, but they will not prosper. The devil's constantly trying to form weapons. He's constantly trying to cause fear. He's constantly trying to cause division and doubt, discord, pain, sorrow, depression, anxiety. He's constantly trying to do that. But you've got to decide that I'm going to declare God's word. I'm going to declare God's truth. I'm going to declare the promises that I believe in. And I'm not going to let this stuff have power over me no more. I'm going to feed it to the birds. See, declarations change, and this is the thing you can see, declarations change your inner words. You know, in psychology, one of the first things they teach you is self-talk. Self-talk's an issue. Like, self-talk, I've talked to you about it before. Some of you know I'm going to keep talking because some of you are still struggling with it. Self-talk is that conversation that you have in your brain. Did you know there's some people that don't have those? 
It's weird. How many of you do not have conversations in your brain? If you raise your hand, I've got security ready to, to get you. <laughs> Self-talk is that conversation you have in your brain. It may be the argument that you're trying to work out before you get there, right? We always win those in our brain, don't we? Yeah. Never goes the way it does in our brain either, <laughs> right? So self-talk is this thing, that, that, that dialogue inside of us that's controlling us. But if I could learn to declare God's promises, if I can learn to declare positive things, if I can learn to declare God's, God's, um, God's truth, if I can learn to declare the right things, the, the, Paul said think on these things, things that are noble, things that are true, things that are good. If I can learn to declare those things, that stuff starts changing my inner words because now it's a part of my, my, my dialogue. Too many of us are staying quiet and I can't help but to see this vision in my head that we're bound and chained by the Philistine being his servant. And so I, I, I have a little twist on a scripture that I, that I saw so clearly when I was studying this. We've all heard this. A, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart Bring forth, brings forth good, and an evil man, out of the evil treasures of his heart, bring forth evil. And then we know this, right? For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. We've preached this, I've preached this a hundred different ways, like whatever's in here is going to come out. But today i got to tell you another angle that I've seen, and I want you to take hold of it. Yes, whatever's in here is going to come out, but we got to start talking to this guy. You know, we got to start talking to him. We got to start correcting him. Like, we, we got to have a, a one on one with our heart. And that's going to come by declaring some truths in the face of all the doubts and all the negatives, all the lies and all the suffering, all the depression, all the anxiety, all the fears. We got to have some heart to hearts with our heart. It's so funny. So everybody know Brad? Brad's not here today, but everybody know Brad? He's, he stands in the back. He's the arrogant, smelly guy. You know, he's... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I said that because he wasn't here. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> but he's a baseball coach. He's a baseball coach extraordinaire, right? And one of the things about him that is special, and most people will say, is that you've seen, you've seen baseball, and you've seen baseball parents, right? They're crazy. Full of the devil, Full of the devil. Like, if you want to hear demons talking, just pull up in some baseball park. You'll hear, ah, like they're just going. I ain't lying. I ain't lying. So in the middle of all the chaos, you know, Brad's very calm, and he's walking around. He'll, he'll yell out, hey, you be up, but we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do this. But then when a kid gets mad, kid gets frustrated and slings a helmet, he'll say, hey, come here. And he won't yell at them in front. I've seen coaches throw helmets at kids. I've seen coaches throw a bat at a kid one time. I thought I was going to kill him. Anyway, that's for another day. <laughs> he'll call the kid over, and he'll get down. And you'll see the kid just shaking his head. And you'll not hear him. And he'll stand up, and the kid will come in. He'll wipe his tears. He'll sit down, and I'll look at him. I'll say, what would you say? He said, that's between me and the kid. But he had a heart-to-heart -heart with him. And got him straight. You know what he really was doing? Because I listen. I got good ears. He was saying, hey, 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 hey. You are good. You're a good ball player. Not only that, you're a good kid. And baseball doesn't matter a whole lot, but you matter a whole lot. And I really care about you. You don't have to let this beat you up. Forget about it. Let's get in here and let's do it again. I've heard him say those things over and over and over. He is declaring truth and hope and heart into that kid and he's trying to and he does it to a lot of kids and what it does is it changes them and that's what I'm saying we got to have those one-on-one -on -one talks with our heart that's doubting our heart that is hurting our heart that is that is that is broken we've got to talk to it we got to declare God's truth when we're feeling that hurt we're feeling that pain we've got to say we are not alone God you love me God you surround me with people who care about me I've, devil you're a liar and I'm not going to sustain these 
lies anymore. I am worth more than what people have said about me. I am worth more than what you say about me, devil. God, I declare your truth. I declare your truth. And you got to find that truth. And you got to declare it. And you got to stand on it. But, but you got to surround yourself with people that will speak into your heart too. Because not only do you need to have a heart to heart with your heart, you got to find other people that will have a heart to heart with your heart. Yeah. It's good preaching. I don't know if you got it yet. Anybody ever called your kids bad? Man, don't do that. That's wrong now. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> you should never call your kids bad. There are no bad kids. There are kids shaped by environment. Kids shaped by the way you raise them and train them and teach them. And yet when they do something that needs corrective or something that needs a heart-to-heart, we just instantly say, why are you so bad? Now that dog I got, that thing's bad. Like there's no heart to heart about that thing. But kids, they should never, because I, I work with kids, you know, and they'll come to me and they'll be crying for no reason. And I'll say, what's going on? And they'll say, well, mama said I was, I was bad and I guess I'm just bad. I had this one kid, he was four years old one time. He come to me, five years old. And he said, I said, what's going on? Why did you do what you did? He said, well, my mom and dad says I'm bad if I don't take my medicine, and I forgot it today. What? These are negative declarations that we're training children to receive. And some of y'all still living with it today. But you're not bad. You're not bad. You're good. And you're, and you're a beautiful person. And you're God's chosen royal priesthood. And he loves you. And so I think about all these, these words that have been spoken over us. Our heart starts to believe. And so then this scripture comes to life. A good man is good because what's in his heart comes out good. But, a, but an evil man... Brings forth evil because what's in his heart is evil. Because out of the heart is what the mouth speaks. Right? So what I got to do is I got to start talking to my heart. I got to start coming backwards and fixing that. I got to start declaring positive things. If somebody has told you, let's say uh, someone has... Maybe you're in a relationship, they've left you and told you you'll never find anyone or you're, or you're, you're, you're not beautiful or, or you're not handsome or, or you're, you know, you're crazy. That seems to be the one that gets thrown around a lot, but you're not. You've got to start having that heart-to-heart. Some of you ladies in here, if your man's calling you crazy, that's just because they know they're fat and ugly and can't get nobody else, so they're trying to dumb you down. <laughs> I'm here to preach the truth. I'm here to preach the truth. But you got to start saying, I am not. I, I am not worthless. You got to reach down because it's hard. Boy, it's hard. You got to say, I, I am not somebody who's going to amount to nothing. I, I am somebody. And I am going to be something special. I am something special. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I am beautifully and wonderfully made. There is no flaw within me. Only the flaw which has been spoken into me. But today I am breaking the power of that flaw. And I am declaring that God has wonderfully and beautifully knit me together in the womb. He made me who I am. And who I am is beautiful in Him. He said, I am His workman. I'm the thing that he's molded. So I am something special. I am something wonderful. Devil, you, you guys stop lying. I'm feeding you to the birds today. And all the people who's ever spoke negative, all the parents who's ever spoke negative over their kids, we just break the power over that right now in the name of Jesus because we are God's beautiful, wonderful creation. And fear and hurt and depression and anxiety and all these negative per perceptions that we have over us, they don't bear no more power right now in the name of Jesus. We break that power. Look at this. 
Y'all getting this this morning? You see, declaration speaks the way that God sees us. If we can do that. I thought this was the most beautiful scripture. I, I, I've read the Bible like five times, and, and I never read this quite like this. And I think God gave me this for Mother's Day. I wasn't looking for a Mother's Day scripture. I said, give me a scripture. I was Google. I need a scripture that just talks about how God loves us. Look at this. Can a mother forget a baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she is born? Think about that. Can, can a mother just stop loving her baby? Though she may, though it's possible, God says, I will never forget you. Amen. So we got some good mamas, good mamas that will fight, good mamas that love their children. And God says, and I love you even more. Amen. See, when you declare and you realize that, when you realize that he loves you this much. You know, a lot of people say, well, why do I go through the things that I go through? That's the nature of a fallen world. Why does it feel like God's punishing me? Well, God, he punishes those he loves. He chastens those he loves. He whips them, just like, like parents who whip a child so they don't stick a knife in an electrical outlet. The second time. Mm-hmm. Just saying. That's what happened to Adam. Y'all wondering where his hair went off? We was testing some stuff. <laughs> Just kidding, buddy. God loves you. He loves you. <laughs> it's too soon. But it's growing back, Samson. Come on. <laughs> but I think, I think all in all, this is what I... I want you to get out of this today is this next note. You know, when you're declaring positive and when you're declaring goodness over your life, even you've you got to reach down deep because sometimes it's hard because sometimes your heart really starts believing all those things people have said about you. And if I started a trend, I could start at Scott and I could say, stand up and tell me one thing somebody negative has said about you. And then we went, every single one of you would have something. We can do that if you want to. Go ahead, Scott. I'm just kidding. But we could do that. Do you understand that? We could do that. Because that's the nature of this fallen evil world, but that's also the nature of Satan. He is constantly trying to make us in here and in here less than what God says we are. Less than what God made us to be. And some of us will buy into that lie. And some of us will be shaped and molded by it. Some of us will allow the fear to absolutely drive us insane. But God loves us. And he has answers for us. And so when we declare his truth, when we reach down and we say, no, God says that I am, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He, he says that I am forgiven. A lot of you need to hear that. Can't forgive yourself right now because maybe some things you've been through, some things you've done. God says you're forgiven. So maybe you need to start saying, I am forgiven. I'm forgiven. I don't know the rest of that word, but that's a good part. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and you rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my king, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true, and it's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. I'm forgiven. He was forsaken. He loves you that much, church, start declaring it. Now, here's the thing where we're going to start making change, okay? We're going to change it in ourselves. We're going to start talking to ourselves, right? We're going to start having one-on-ones with our heart. But also, declarations create the culture surrounding you. You need to start talking these things in your circles. You need to not let anyone say negative things in your circles. You need to not let anyone say these things in the, in anywhere, or even outside of your circle, in your work. 
in your schools, in your homes. Don't let people start talking like negative and down and breaking you down. Say, no, 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 no. Grand Grand is the best at this. You can't even say, I love you to death. She'll say, hold on now. How many knows what she says? I love you to life. Like some may say, that's extreme. Hey, you know what? I'm okay with it. Let's be extreme with God's declarations. I, it doesn't matter if it, me, it means anything to you or not, but let's be extreme with it. Like I'll come over and I'll get the garbage at her house and she'll say, how you doing? I'll say, I'm so tired. No, no, no. Your strength is renewed like the eagles. You are not tired. You got the strength. Come on now. I need you to come in here and fix 72 things. Or call Adam. <laughs> you know, an eagle, when he's, kinda, he's, he's going through, he goes through a phase where he renews himself. He'll fly up and he'll pull all his feathers out. Adam's in that stage. So, we <laughs> listen, this is important. This is important. Look, I want you to see it. Declarations create the culture. So I need to let the culture around me know where I stand with the things that are being said. Grand Grand's good at it. We need to be better at it. We need to only let positive, godly light be spoken around us. And I'll show you this. In John, he says, Jesus, knowing all that was going on, or all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked, this, this is good, Ooh, this, this, this is powerful. I might even want y'all to stand up. I don't know. We'll think about it. This is, this is in the, the garden when he's getting arrested. Right? Judas has just betrayed him. So Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, who is it that you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. He said, what did he say? I am he. And Jesus and Judas, the, the, the traitor, was standing there with them. And when Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and they fell to the ground. We've tried to portray that a few different ways in our Easter programs that we do. Because I think that's the coolest scene in the whole Bible. I'm telling you the coolest. That's, to me, like the resurrection is really cool. Like it's, it's really important, obviously. But when you're talking about the really the coolest scene in the whole Bible, it's when Jesus is standing there and these soldiers come at him and they're, they're, they're there to get him. And he says, who are you looking for? And they say, Jesus. And when he says, I am he, they fall to the ground. It bumfuzzles me how they get up and still arrest the man. But then I realized it's because he let him. Why is that so important? Because we have the same power of life and death in us, in that tongue, that when the enemy comes to take us captive, we can proclaim Jesus and his promises, and it has to fall to the ground. No darkness, no enemy, nothing can stand in the presence of God's word, God's promise, and God's provision. And so we got to start declaring it. So when the devil comes and says, no, you're depressed. Depression's hard. You know, you, you don't want, you can't, you, when you get really depressed, you don't want to get up. You don't want to move. You don't, you don't want to fight. People will be around you and say, come on, you got to fight. And you're just looking at them and say, I can't. But we got to figure out a way to reach down. And maybe just in two words. Try to declare God's word, and you will come out of it. But even more so, surround yourself with people that will declare for you. So important. Are y'all getting this today? Look, declarations focus on God's provision instead of our issues. We can use our mouth to complain, or we can use our mouth to praise. We can use our mouth to complain, 
or we can use our mouth to praise. And if you're using your mouth to complain, you are establishing a culture of complaining around you, and people will know you as a complainer, and I promise you that nothing in this world, nothing in this world will tear apart your peace more than complaining. Like we have this setting rule that we've had in church for a long time. Don't bring a problem to me. Bring a solution. Like what? Let's not complain about the issue. Let's fix the issue. Like, and it's the, same, it's the same way in your walk with the Lord. If you allow complaining to be established in your heart, there is no way you're declaring God's truth. Because you're wasting all your words declaring the problem. You know, and some people will take that to the extreme. Like, I'll take it, for instance, like with sickness. There's some people that, that will have the full-out, blown-out flu. Like, Ugh, yes, nothing is wrong with me. I'm not going to declare it. Uh, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, you sound like a quack a But what you can say it's yes, I, I'm sick, and there's some problems going on. Like it's, it's, but Jesus is my healer. Amen. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. And we can start declaring his truths. Amen. We don't have to go to the extreme of not talking about what's going on. I think that's denial. <laughs> and when you get into a denial, listen to me when I say this, and you know, some of y'all need to really hear me. When you get into a phase of denial, it almost undercuts the faith you need in God. But when you can say, here I am, and here's what I'm standing on, here's what I'm facing, and here's where I'm going, then that's a whole other level of faith. When you can acknowledge the pit you're in, but God can bring you up out of the pit, that's a whole other faith. Let's stop denying the things we're going through, but let's start proclaiming where he's bringing us out of it. Come on, let's start proclaiming the truth and declaring what he's done for us. Oh, y'all ain't getting it. Uh, somebody, this right here, she's getting it. She's got it. Adam's got it. He just lost his hair. All right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I love you, buddy. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, look at this. I want you to see something. You got to see this. See, so people... People think that you're saved by believing, but that's not all, because the Word tells us it's not all. Like You can't be saved just by believing in Jesus in your heart. Hear me, that's not biblical. Look what it says. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead then you will be saved. There's power in declaring. So much power, so much power in declaring that it saves your soul. You getting that? Look at this. So faith. How many need some faith in here? Like you've just gone through the ringer. Come on, how many of you? You've had a lot of negative spoken to your life and you just need some faith, right? You've had a, like a bad doctor's report or you've had some people that's just, just been flat out mean to you and hurt you, right? A whole room of you. You know, so faith comes from hearing. How do you hear it? It's being declared. Faith comes from hearing the good news about Christ. So if we're going to win the war in our mind, there, there's some shifts that's got to happen. We've got to understand how the negative has taken and dug a trench in our brain and our neural pathways and, and caused kind of shaped who we are. We've got to redig some trenches of truth. In order to do that, we've got to learn God's language. And that's his word. That's his promises. That's his provision. But you're not going to do that if you don't get in it. And I know the one-year Bible is extremely intimidating. So I'll suggest something else to you. Download your YouVersion app or just get you a good old leatherback. Read a chapter a day or find you a Bible plan that lasts five days. Whatever it takes Get in the Bible every day so you can learn. Did you know on the YouVersion Bible app, you can actually go in there 
and type in something you're going through, and it will pull up every plan that you can read and declare over yourself. We have the tools in front of us, guys, and we're not using it. We have the tools in front of us. Look, I'm going to close up with this. you got to surround yourself with daily declarations. You know how this comes? This comes from maybe putting like post-its on your mirror where you get ready. Maybe you've done some research, you've dug, and you've found scriptures that speak to you. Whatever it is, it's hard for me as, as a pastor in front of a group of people to start naming out the negatives that's been feeding you. That's hard, and that, and that would be a waste of time because we all have our unique things that we battle and our unique things that we struggle with, right? But you know what you struggle with. And that Bible is personal to you. It's not just meant for me. And so we can go and do the research and we can find the scriptures that we need to declare. And we can start writing them down. And daily we can start declaring them. Daily we can start saying them. And that, like I said, you got to surround yourself with daily declarations. Maybe put them on your mirror. Maybe put them in your car. You know? Take out that picture from 1999 of your boyfriend when he had the blonde streaks or whatever. Take that out. Throw that away. And, and put, I know. You had them blonde streaks, didn't you, Ronald? Come on. No, he's looking at me like, you don't shut up. I'm going to kill you, man. And so, <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> Put them up on your phone. Like make your background a scripture or something that you gotta stand on. You know, do do a do a Facebook fast for a little while, maybe two days, maybe three days. I don't know. Do an Instagram fast, do a social media fast, and, and spend that time just looking at those scriptures. And you and you don't have to fill yourself up with a billion different scriptures. Find two or three and read them over and over and over and over and over again so that when the time comes. You can declare them. And they can start shaping you. See, you're digging those trenches. Right? So you need to surround yourself with daily decorations. Church, this, I'm telling you something right now, just as a person who works on myself all the time, it's good not, even even if it's not just biblical declarations, even if you just look in the mirror and you say, you are a good person, you are kind-hearted, you will help change people's lives. You will make a difference with every breath that you have. Like these are things that I tell myself. Like you are not the things people say about you. You are special. You work hard. You care. And I say those things over. And those things become fuel. It's important as Christians that we declare God's word, but it's also important as people that we declare those positive things into our life just this fuel to keep the enemy at bay because the enemy wants you to think everything negative everything against that and I'll show you in just a second number two surround yourself with uplifting declarers declarers do you have somebody in your life that will say don't say I love you to death I love you to life you're not tired but you're renewed with the strength of an eagle do you have someone in your life that can declare for you that's where mamas are real important. Daddies will say, boy, you got to work harder, try harder, do better. Mamas will say, it's okay, baby. You're beautiful. At least mine did. <laughs> Grand grand will say, honey, that's why you think you're so good looking. Your mom just spent all her time telling you how pretty you are. Now you keep talking about it. You got to quit talking about it. Surround yourself. And, I, and I'll tell you this, mamas. I'll tell you this. I will tell you something that will change your life if you don't know it yet. The way you speak to your children will create who they are as an adult. If you tell them they're worthy and tell them they're special, tell them that they're going places, then they will. That's why we need our mamas. I think it's the most important thing that we adopt that. 
Number three, be known. Be known for your positive declarations. Like, I don't care if you're the crazy positive person. I have been known in the past, like people say, I ain't going to church with that crazy Jesus guy. He is crazy for Jesus. Thank you. I like it. Be known. Be known that you're not a person that receives negative declaration. Look, this is why it's so important. The heart, we talked about it, is deceitful above all things and beyond cure, the Bible says. Who can understand it? One day your heart can be on fire for something and the next day tired of something. The heart can take you up and take you down. This is why I'm saying we got to have a one-on-one. we got to have a, a Brad talk. You've heard of t- Ted talk? we got to have a Brad talk with our heart. You are good. You have worked hard. You do matter. we got to start speaking into our heart. The scriptures say, if you want to enjoy life, how many wants to enjoy life? Look at this. And see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Some of you may say, well, I don't lie, preacher. Every time you speak something that is against who, against you, that God has said about you, anytime you receive the lie that has been said about you that ain't true, then you're speaking lies. And you're not going to enjoy life. Yeah, you didn't get that. Some of y'all got to sink that in a minute. I'll give you five seconds. If you want to enjoy your days and keep, and if you want to have happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Church, there has to be a day when we decide that we're only going to declare God's goodness and His hope and who I am because of Him. And I promise you this, the devil is doing his very best to get you to agree with him. So that's what this altar call is going to be about. If you've been agreeing with the devil, can I have a prayer team up here? Just somebody that can help me pray with some people. I want you to stand with me, just every head bowed and eye closed. This is a sensitive moment because this is, this is a hard moment. If you've been, if you found yourself agreeing with those lies that's been spoke over you, you found yourself believing all the lies that's been thrown into your mind, and you just need someone to declare some truth over you, and just want, and you just want someone to take you by the hand and pray with you, and just lift you up. I want you to come and let's do that. I'm not going to try to have a fancy wording to get you down here. All I want to say is if you're at a place where you're tired of believing the lies and you just need some positive, just some hope just spoke into you, we want to pray with you. Lord, in Jesus' name, I ask that you will just open up our hearts and let us know that You love us. You're for us. You don't want us to believe the lies the enemy has said. You don't want us to be held captive by those giants. But instead, you want us to have faith in what you've done for us and who you've made us. God, there are people in this room right now that's been holding on to those lies. They've been held captive by those lies. And I just ask that you will open up 
soften their heart and have them give them the courage to come and let us pray with you in Jesus name I hold it open just for about five minutes